Welcome back to part five of DoorDash Truth. We've talked about why I got into doing Geek Economy Day video one. We talked about who does this type of work and why and if they are being taken advantage of. We talked a little bit about, will I be doing this in five years? Do I think it's still good? Do I recommend it? Um, the future, things like that. We talked about the ugly side of DoorDash. While we're trying to stay positive with these little mini series here at DoorDash Truth, there's things new drivers should know, right? Um, and in order to stay positive, you have to know the reality of the apps and what they do, why they do, what they do, and all that stuff. Today, is, this video should be coming out on 4th of July, a day of independence, right? So today, the last part, I want to talk about you. Now that you have all this information, you know a little bit about DoorDash, my opinion, my story. You guys have read and seen the comments in the various videos and Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've read something or said something that upsets you. Maybe you disagree about what we've talked about in the last four videos. But I think it's fitting this is 4th of July, it's Independence Day. We talk about control. We talk about all these type of things we've talked about in the last four days, right? What kind of gig economy worker are you going to be now that you have this information? Now that you know what the apps do, what DoorDash does, you've seen my story the positive, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that stuff. You, you've heard me talk about the ugly truths. Will I do it in five years and why? What kind of driver are you going to be? You versus them. In any kind of work, there's always going to be negatives and positives. It's going to be things you like, things you don't like, bosses you like, bosses you don't like, right? Days of the week where your assignments are good, days of the week where assignments are bad. You still control how you feel, your emotions, if you decide to do that work. On YouTube specifically, and I guess Facebook and Reddit, I'm not really on those, but I would imagine it's similar in some regard. You have two different types of people that work these apps, in my opinion. We've talked about this before. You have glass half empty, glass half full individuals. Who will you be? You get to choose. The app doesn't tell you who you want to be. Another driver, another content creator will not tell you who you're going to be, won't tell you what type of experience you're going to have with the app. It won't. It can't make your goals for you. It can't tell you to adapt or not adapt. It can't tell you to have a couple of more apps or only work one app. Nobody can decide that but you. Most people hate DoorDash. A lot of people hate doing this type of work. And I get it. Everybody's experience will be different based on your market, based on how long you've been doing it. Most of the people that really hate it have been doing it for a long time. Don't blame you. I worked in restaurants for the majority of my life. There are definitely days I went to work and dreaded it, did not want to do it. Did not want to wake up early and count all these products in a freezer at 5 a.m. Didn't want to do that. So I decided not to because I have the independent choice to decide how I'm going to live, how I'm going to work, and who I'm going to give my time and energy to. This last video is kind of a challenge to everybody. This kind of work can be difficult, but mostly it's what you make it. And all the time and energy that we give the apps in a negative way, it's not going to serve us any greater good. Regardless if there's legislation, which we've talked about a couple of days ago and in many other videos in the past, and we'll continue to talk about it. Regardless if those things happen, it's a Band-Aid on a bigger issue. The kind of work that we do, whatever it is, when we are trading our time for potential earnings and money, whether it's in that day, a week from now, a month from now, or a year from now, we're always trading time for money, but we can control that time. I believe once we figure that out, once you think and change the mindset a little bit and looking at the gig economy as an opportunity, which it should be, it's a side hustle versus looking at it as a job. Those of us that look at it like a J-O-B and are clocking in and clocking out and working the same day, every day, every, the same times, every single day, working the apps in the same way, that's going to cause you to be frustrated. If you look at it as an opportunity and pick your best opportunity in the gig economy, whether it's DoorDash or Uber or this or that, whatever, you can do okay. I still recommend this type of work.
but you have to look at it as an opportunity versus a J-O-B. You can control that. Only you can make that decision for you. DoorDash just celebrated its 10-year anniversary last week. Gave 200 drivers or so $10,000 for being with the platform since day one. So it's not a lot of drivers, but it was a cool thing for them to do, right? I mean, it's a nice gesture. They also came out with all these new things that they're going to be, that they've been pilot testing, whether it's earned by time or earned by, um, earned by order. My earned by time right now, which is an hourly guarantee from DoorDash, is up to 16 bucks an hour. They're changing things that the customers can do within the app. They're changing how merchants work with the DoorDash app. DoorDash and all these apps really will continue to change and evolve. We have to do the same along with them if we're going to continue to work and use the app as an opportunity, not a J-O-B. Some analysts are saying this type of work will be almost non-existent once we get into the 2030s. So you're talking seven to 10 years from now. This kind of courier, food delivery, shopping kind of stuff will start to go down and be obsolete. Think about 15 years ago, you go into a Walmart. They didn't have many self-checkouts. Now, that's all they got. There's barely a cashier. Cashiers in certain places are done. That trend will continue. Us delivering food in the way that we do will continue to change and evolve. Will you adapt and change with it? You versus them. Who do you want to be? A negative individual that is never adapting or somebody that's taking control using the apps as an opportunity versus a J-O-B. That's how you can level up, in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this little series of videos. I hope you guys are having a great 4th of July or whenever you're watching this video. And always remember, you have control. Don't let anybody else tell you differently. These apps are an opportunity. DoorDash is an opportunity that right now I could turn on any one of these apps and try to make money. But I will not let it take my energy or my time. If the offers aren't good, try another app. Hit that decline button. That is your power. You hit the decline, the offer hopefully will go up for the next driver to where it's worth their time. Don't let DoorDash take your energy. Don't let DoorDash manipulate you, treat you like an app slave, all those kind of things. You are not a victim. Today's Independence Day. Celebrate that independence by being independent. We are independent contractors, right? You can control more than you think. I'll see you guys tomorrow.